plus. So we're going to continue with the chapter four on subroutines and the stack. So this is uh, we're going to start off with yesterday's example. So yesterday what we did, uh, we actually created a sub subroutine for delay, right? And we saw an uh, example of two subroutine delays and how does the return address stack it actually works. So return address stack helps the PC to come back to the previous location. So let's see another thing, uh, another issue that could occur whenever you're calling a subroutine. So this is based on yesterday's example. Yesterday we had uh, the example of uh, making the LED blink right. So in yesterday's code, we wrote the program such that the LED blinks continuously. Now let's say we want it to blink for a number of times only. On, 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 on. Let's consider on off as one set. So let's say we just want it to on off or blink only 10 times, for example. So that means this main program we're going to put inside a finite loop, right? So what we can do is we can actually
difficulty is that when you call the delay 100 milliseconds, here also you got use working register, right? Of course, I didn't write back the whole program. You can refer. The first thing is move little value, D. So what happens to this 10? What happens to this 10? It gets overwritten with other values, right? Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying or not? Yes. Because what, all, what, whatever that you're going through is very, very important. So, which means when I call delay 100 milliseconds, here in this program also I am using working register. I'm using, I'm using working register to load my value to uh, what, sorry, decimal 250 and then I'm using to load uh, decimal 200 and then I return. When I come back here, do you think the content of working register will be the same? No. The content of working register has already been changed here in subroutine. So do you think this program will run 10 times? Definitely. It definitely won't run for 10 times. So that is another issue. Of course, you may say, so then uh, we use loop, uh, loop counter, we use another file register. La. Why? Of course, I know I can do that. I just want to show. Sometimes when, uh, this main program is quite simple. Sometimes the main program may have a lot of other tasks to do. And you know that working register is always affiliated with a lot of instruction. So I'm just uh, exaggerating the effect. So when it comes back to clear port C, when you decrease working register, the content of working register is no longer 10. It has already been changed. So that is one problem. So what we need to do is, before we actually call the delay, we should save the content of working register first. Because why? Because you know you're going to use working register there. So if you know that you're going to use working register, you're going to save the content of working register before you call. And then before you return, you load back the value of working register so that when you come back, the content of working register is as if nothing happened. So how do we actually save those uh, values is by using stack. Yesterday we went into the concept of stack right? To stack the information. Now yesterday we learned about return address stack. Return address stack is actually a hardware stack. Hardware stack means it's a dedicated stack and that is specifically for the PC return address. So you cannot disturb that stack. For this purpose we have to create a software stack. Now in PIC 18, there is no <coughs> hardware stack. Hardware st there is no hardware stack means there is no hardware stack for general purpose. There is hardware stack, but that is, like yesterday we learned, is written address stack. That is specifically for PC. You cannot use it for general purpose. So now if we want to load this value, we need to generate a stack. So let us actually see what is a stack, how do we actually write in the instruction to store a value inside the stack and also to take out the value from the stack. Yesterday we saw that right. In the return address stack, it actually will load the value of the previous uh, of the earlier address and then it will take back the address. But then for the return address stack you don't you don't control it. It automatically happens when you call and when you return. When you call it actually saves the next address. When you return it, it actually stores back the address. That is automatically done. So you don't have to worry about you know storing and taking out. That is done automatically when you use the word call and return. But now in this case, we have to actually store the value and retrieve back the value. So for that, there is we need to come up with a certain set of instructions. So let's see. I should have shown in much more easier. So don't, if you have doubts, ask. 
now it will be difficult for me to explain because there's, the coding is not there. But nevertheless, I just explained stack is a storage, it's a temporary <coughs> storage. It's like how I gave you the example of a box and you store the book. The first book that goes inside, then you stack one on top of the other, right? Will be the last book to be taken out. The last book which you put on top, that's the first book that you take out. So that is the concept of stack, it's a temporary storage. In yesterday's case, when we were using call and return the subroutine, when it calls the subroutine, the, ad the next address to be executed after the call, that address is actually saved in the stack. It need to save because the PC, when you, whenever you call, the PC need to change the address to go to the subroutine. So you need to save this address so that when the PC goes to the subroutine, and it executes return. Return means where should it come back? It should come back to the first position, right? Where is this first position? You have saved in the stack. So you take out back the address, load back inside PC, and then the PC knows how to come back. So that is actually the concept of stack. Because if you still don't understand, you can come and save it. Then it will be easier. So coming back uh, to the stack. So before we go into the stack, see that is the stage one is a hardware stack. Today we need to create a software stack. So just to recap from yesterday, to call the function r call and call, just a few things we see before we go. So this is the difference between the call function and r call function. Call is actually a 32-bit instruction, which means the end, uh, the offset value, the distance, is actually has 20 bits. So which means this one can go for a very uh, far range. Whereas r call is only a 16-bit instruction. So you can only go, uh, subroutine is one kilo away, which is 1024 steps. It is same like branch and go to. Go to also has uh, one million steps. This one also can go up to one million, that means the distance. Or in other words, it can go possibly one million, negative one million. So which means the whole program memory. Whereas uh, branch, branch can only go 1024 steps, right? So same with the alpha, alpha can only go uh, do you understand this thing? The distance? So you can either use call or call. As I mentioned, uh, the return instruction is written from subroutine. Anything else? So now we go to the stack. As I mentioned earlier, yesterday the stack is the first in, last out data structure, it's a temporary storage. Now for the stack, it needs to have a stack pointer. Yesterday also we had a stack pointer, right? It actually points to next time. So whenever, now yesterday's uh, stack is actually a hardware stack. So we don't need to worry about uh, uh, initializing the stack pointer, things like this. It already has a dedicated stack pointer. It already has a dedicated uh, location for the uh, 31 level stack, return address stack. But now if, if we want to create a, a software stack, what are the things that we need is, one, we need a block of RAM of, block of, RAM of adequate size. Okay, that's what we need. And then the stack is often used to hold return address for subroutine calls or intra-pending and temporary storage. Yesterday the stack we saw to hold the written address for subroutine calls, right? Now we're going to see for the temporary storage. We're going to use it for storing temporary values. stack means that we actually create the stack. So usually for stack, we always take from this address. This is RAM, so that means we are dealing with data memory. An address E00. This stack is actually, we are creating this stack at data memory. 
So it's a normal convention is usually we will go to the bank E, e is actually bank 14. Why we choose this location is because it's actually towards the end and most likely it will be unused. Most likely it's unused. So we are going to use now the concept of stack is we try to follow the exact the box method. So therefore you can see that the address, the smaller address is actually at the bottom. So if the address increases, it goes to E01. Okay. The normal convention is the way we write, we always write the smaller address on top and then it goes big right. Now why we actually do like this is so that you can visually see the effect of stack. That's why. Is it okay? So you can see that the first thing that comes out, the first thing that goes in will be the last thing that to go out. So this is stack. So one thing is you need the adequate RAM which is E00. The second thing you need is you need a stack pointer. You need a stack pointer. Now usually the stack pointer will be FSR1. So the normal convention is use FSR1. Is that okay? So how do you actually, so you need two things, huh? you need RAM and you need stack pointer. So how do you actually initialize the stack pointer? It's very very simple. You just load FSR, FSR1, E00. This will initialize the FSR1 to point at E00. So this is how you initialize the stack, the stack pointer. Is it okay? Any question up to this point? Any question up to this point? Ask question, don't wait. Now as I mentioned that we are going to use this for, as a temporary storage. In our example just now, the coding, we need to save the content of working register first, right? So, we're going to use this stack, we're going to store the content of working register here. When you store the content of working register here, the pointer will increase by 1. And then when you want to return back, you minus 1 and then you take back this working register content out. So, how do we actually put the value and take it out back is by using this two operation which are known as push and pop. The push operation grows the stack. Push means you keep pushing the values here and it keeps growing. The stack is growing. Pop means you take it out and use it all out back. So it's like a temporary thing you put and then you take it out back. Do you understand the concept? So the next thing is uh, how do we actually use this push and pop? Okay, so this is what I mentioned. This is a software stack. They said it doesn't have a hardware stack. There's no dedicated stack pointer. So you have to virtual, create a virtual stack. That's what you mean. So what are the F F F FRS registers can be used as stack pointer? Uh, by convention, FSR1, uh, just mentioned. So, this is uh, the diagram you have showed there as well. So, push and power operation are often performed during a subroutine call. That's what we, you saw the problem, right? The problem is you need to save the value first before you go to subroutine. So, these are the two macro for push and also pop. These macros are also the same, so you can memorize them. So what happens when you use push, push R means it receives one argument, right? This argument is the content of any, this argument is the, what is it? The address of the file register. You actually pass the address of the file register. So let's see, if I write, portion here before I call the subroutine if I write here push R I pass a pass okay register before I call the subroutine remember what why I need to push okay register first I'm saving I need 
need to save the content of working register first before I call the delay because, uh, because before I call the subroutine because in the subroutine the first thing is you are loading uh, the, uh, another value to working register which means in the subroutine you will change the content of working register so before I call I need to push our working register so let's see what happens when you when you call this sub uh, when you call this macro push r working register. Push r working register will invoke this macro, and this working register will be here. Right? Argument will be working register. So move ff argument to post increment one. What is argument here? Okay, register. So move the content of working register to post increment one. So of course. Uh, So we're going to push our working register, assuming that you, are, you have already declared this macro on top, the program start template. So push our working register means, here you are, what you are doing? You are moving the content of working register to post increment 1. So because you have uh, initialized the pointer to point here, the content of FSR1 will be loaded at E00 and then this is post increment right. Post increment means what happens to the pointer? It will increase by 1. So it go up. Follow? Okay or okay. Then you call the sub uh, subroutine right. Uh, just like the subroutine here. 